Hello, so here we are with a review of the ASUS Transformer Pad, the TF701T, the latest iteration of the ASUS Transformer Pad line. And of course, this is an Android tablet, but it's an Android tablet with a difference because you can connect it up to this, a keyboard dock. And together, these work to make an Android laptop style device. So you can open it up like a laptop, but you can detach it and use it as a tablet. Now before I get into this review, I suppose what I should explain is where I came from when I was looking at this device, because this is my personal device. I've paid my own uh, hard money on this. Um, I should also say, sorry about the lighting, I'm trying to reduce the reflection off this screen, uh, something we'll come on to in a little bit. So um, at home in the evenings, I like to sort of browse the internet maybe when I'm sat on the sofa. Um, I don't tend to like the experience of using a tablet the whole time. Okay for browsing a few web pages, but if I want to write a few emails, um, maybe type a few bits in, I find it a little bit uncomfortable uh, with the on-screen keyboard, even though you can orientate the device in portrait and landscape mode. So this is where uh, the likes of the keyboard dock comes in and uh, I have been using a old Windows laptop that was really far too big for practical use uh, on the sofa. It just felt a bit clunky, um, it wasn't very practical. So I wanted something that gave me the best of both worlds uh, but gave me the easy ability to have sort of instant on sort of style performance, uh, sync with all my accounts. So the ASUS Transform Pad line seemed to be the one that did the job. And the fact that you can switch between sort of the two modes was perfect. And it worked for a personal and a business um, scenario for me. So I could easily dock the tablet into uh, this here. If I can get that in. There we go. Um, so that I could actually write out an, a lengthy email if I needed to on the keyboard and then I could detach it when I was just perhaps watching a video or something like that. So let's start with the keyboard. It's about 75% of the size of a standard QWERTY keyboard. We've got five lines of key, but we've got this added sixth row, which is all customized to the ASUS transformer pad. So we've got things from a back button to the brightness controls for the screen, uh, to a screenshot button, to the settings menu, to play, pause, and even to actually locking the screen uh, itself, just like that. It's a really nice keyboard uh, in terms of those I've experienced on mobile devices. It's firm enough with enough feedback, perhaps a little harsher uh, on the fingers than some might like, because there's not an awful lot of travel in the keyboard, but it feels quite good. The trackpad is fairly responsive, and of course you've got the added benefit of actually being able to use the touch screen as well. So whilst we've looked at all the ports and controls on the tablet uh, in our unboxing, you have got the added benefit on the keyboard dot that you've got a standard USB 3 port, you've got an SD card reader just here, you've got uh, power controls, or the ability to power the keyboard dock itself, on the tablet, you've got 3.5mm headphone jack, micro HDMI out, a micro SD card slot that supports up to 128GB cards. We've got the volume controls, power button, 5 megapixel camera, we've got the speaker and a microphone on the other side. On the bottom, we've got this plastic, hard ABS plastic base with four rubber feet. And then on the back of the tablet, we've got this metal brush metal uh, finish which looks really premium and high end and if you looked at the tablet first off you could easily say that someone spent seven eight hundred pounds but this is a device that comes in around the sort of four hundred pound mark so let's just attach the um, keyboard dock because we kind of explained that now it's got a battery built in here uh, the battery capacity on here is approximately four hours usage it's a 16 watt battery compared to the 31 watt hour battery uh, of the tablet itself which has a battery life of 13 hours so combined uh, they actually last for about 17 hours and you can see with this little widget I've got on screen here uh, you get the tablet battery power and the keyboard battery power and basically when you're connected up it'll try to use the power in the keyboard dock first rather than the tablet and then when you're charging it'll look to charge the tablet up uh, first as well. So out of the box you get a fairly pure Android experience. ASUS have made their own tweaks with some of the options um, in the sort of settings menu etc. 
They've also added a few sort of apps now. Uh, this is my own personal device and I've been using it for a few weeks so it's not completely stock out of the box here. Uh, it's running the latest version of the software, Android 4.3, which has uh, been offered by ASUS already. But you can customize the way your apps uh, appear. So I can hide apps and I've already hidden some of the ones that come pre-installed just simply because I don't need them. Things like the mirror and the browser. Um, you've got press reader, you've got Xeno, you've got web storage. So you've got quite a few options out of the box here. So let's have a look at just playing back some footage. Now you can probably see the screen's quite reflective. It's actually not quite so bad um, when you're using it in an everyday scenario. It is reflective, so you do have to be careful, but it's perhaps not as bad as it actually looks on camera. So let's just try and demonstrate the screen a little bit here. So it's never going to be the same through the camera there, but it is really, really impressive. And it has a stunning resolution that knocks the socks off a lot of other tablets. It's 2560 by 1600. It's an IPS panel. Now you may have heard the sound coming out of this uh, here. Of course it's got a headphone jack, but the speaker is located on the right side of the tablet on the back when you look at it. Now it's pretty loud. It's not um, tinny or anything like that. Um, it's quite clear. The only problem I have is that when you're holding it sort of in a landscape mode you'll see that my fingers sort of cover up the speaker so end up muffling the sound a little bit. I think ASUS would have done a slightly better job if they'd put uh, another speaker perhaps over the other side or positioned it slightly differently. Now that's a small criticism uh, because a lot of the time you may not be holding it like that it's just the way I choose to hold it. If you're holding it in um, portrait mode it's not going to have the same effect it's when it's in landscape mode that I really notice that but a lot of the time I've got it docked so it's not so much of an issue but it's just a small frustration uh, for me um, in terms of the speaker but it's very good uh, actual quality of the sound. So we've got the customized sort of settings menu. Let's just go in and show you some of these uh, options you've got here. You've got all the standard sort of things that you'd expect. Now again, I've uh, installed some of my own uh, bits here, but you've got roughly uh, 25 gig available out of the uh, box. This is the 32 gig model, but you've got the micro SD memory card slot that supports 128 gig cards. You've got the SD reader on the keyboard dock as well. You've got some ASUS customized settings around screenshots and quick settings and battery saving. The battery uh, power on this is said to be uh, around about 17 hours. I haven't put it through extensive tests, but I'm certainly not having to worry about constantly charging this up. I could easily leave it four or five days and still have battery power uh, left in this, depending upon my usage. I'm not the heaviest of users, but I'm probably using it for two hours a day maybe, uh, depending uh, you know what sort of day it is and what I'm doing. I've got synchronization for all my different accounts here and all the sort of normal things. So you can see um, it's running Android version 4.3. So it feels solid, it looks the part. The bezel around the screen is a little bit of a disappointment. It's actually quite thick. There's a good centimeter, on, if not two, that ASUS could really knock off around the edge. It makes the overall tablet um, seem a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Having said that, whilst it works against it, it also works well to keep it at a size that isn't too small for use as a laptop alternative. Uh, and it's possibly one of the reasons it's a it appeals. The fact they've squeezed everything into this fairly low profile um, designed bit of kit. Now it's a little bit heavier than a lot of other tablets. So the tablet itself uh, weighs in at 585 grams whilst the dock weighs in at 570. So together it's just over a kilo that they actually um, weigh which is quite heavy when you consider it to the likes of the Sony Xperia Tablet Z or the iPads uh, which are generally about 100 grams less. But they do uh, 
have a bigger battery um, in these or in the, in the ASUS transformer line and gives you better battery life. So um, is it a trade-off? I still think the ASUS is a little bit heavier than it needs to be, but it's not unwieldy heavy and it feels fairly balanced. Um, you wouldn't really hold it and feel it's like top heavy or anything like that. Now we've got the cameras on here, uh, which are good for front facing video calls and things like that. How much you use the rear facing camera will be up to you. I'm not one of these people who takes my tablet out to use it for photos, but uh, considering a tablet wouldn't be your primary uh, camera device, there's loads of options here, including the different shooting modes for both video and stills. So we've got time lapse and high speed and slow motion on the video camera. And we've got the variety of options here, including HDR and panorama for uh, the stills. It records at uh, 1080p from the rear camera. It's a five megapixel uh, rear camera. You've got the digital zoom just here, slider control, buttons here for video recording and still images. You've got a turbo mode, which is like burst shot to take lots of uh, different photos. You've got a few effects here. You can switch between the two cameras. And you've got even further settings here with white balance, exposure, uh, ISO, shutter sounds, etc. Loads of options, and it's actually a very impressive camera um, in terms of the options you've got uh, for a tablet. The results are fairly mixed. They're not going to blow you away, but uh, I've seen far worse. Uh, it's got two gig of RAM um, in here. Found it to be really snappy, along with the uh, super fast uh, processor. It's got in here, it's a NVIDIA uh, Tegra 4 and uh, clocked at 1.9 uh, gigahertz. Now again, I'm sort of mentioning I'm not a purist. I'm not going to constantly be running this to max. I don't play games, but I've noticed no uh, lag on the device. Everything's performed really well for me and I'm very, very happy with the experience I've had overall. So it may differ a little bit for you, um, but if I had to find criticism with it, the bezel around the edge of the screen, the speaker position, and the overall weight. However, as I mentioned, the package together sort of takes you away from those small criticisms that I actually have. It becomes a very versatile device for both personal and business use. It looks the part, it certainly looks like it's worth a lot more money than uh, you actually pay for it. Now whilst prices are always changing, you're looking at around about uh, £450 for this all in and that's a very powerful device for that sort of price point. You can check out our full written review over at blog.clove.co.uk. There is a link in the video description below. So until next time, thanks for watching.